Hello, Parsons Collab Design for Literacy Students. This is Marcos. This is our week 13 going to week 14 video briefing. And I just want to do a quick video here to make sure everyone is on track and aware of what is due and what is needed as we continue with our audiovisual storybooks. Let's take a quick look here at our schedule. We are on week 13. Our storybook final files are due, and I'm in the process this weekend of posting them to or sending them to Blurb, our printer, who will deliver them in about 10 days. So it's vital that if you're one of the people that haven't quite finished, that you need to get that done over this weekend in order for me not to have to pay rush charges. I don't want to have to pay rush charges or get so late that you don't even get to get the book at finals. It's going to be important that everyone have both their books and their audiovisual book finished on our final review day where we'll meet here at my office and have a spectacular final review session with our guests where we will share our prizes and spoils of our incredible projects that we've created together here in this cool class. So that's uh, important for that. And then also we need to make sure uh, that we stay on track with our audiovisual book. And we had our review sessions with a kind of small class. There were lots of, lots of things going on with some of you. Those of you who did not make it, if you and some of you have done this, please make sure you schedule an appointment to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Otherwise, you will be str stricken down with an absence. And some of you are, are building up a lot of absences, and I'm not very happy about that. It's going to affect your grade for sure. It, the rule is two more, two or more absences and you're out of the class. Some of you have that. Now, I don't have to do that necessarily, but the A-making machine is going to have a major meltdown if you have that many absences. So you got to make sure you connect with me on the days that you do not go to class. It's not about having a good excuse or a reason. And many of you have good excuses and I'm very empathetic when things are happening and you need to miss class. But the way to make up for that is to have a Zoom session with me to review your work. It doesn't have to be a long time, but it needs to be after that class, before the next class begins, and, and preferably over the weekend where I have more time personally to give to you guys when at during the week I'm really swamped with my with my design work for my business. So make sure you're doing that. And um, the A-making machine is starting to get upset because it looks like it's not gonna be making A's for everybody. And it likes to do that. So please, I, I warned you in the beginning, it's about communication and I need you guys to communicate with me. If I email you for something, please email me back. And if you miss class, you gotta make arrangements with me to make up for that. And it's not enough to say that you posted your work. You can do that, but you'll get an absence and you'll miss points for not presenting. All right, so as we go through here, we're gonna have part two coming up, our design development phase where we're going to have each of you create your final, uh, not your final, but your design proposal for how you will expand your concept into a full design in a static form. And so that next week, our week 15 design completion part three week, you can then do the motion graphics and create the final version of, of your uh, audiovisual book. And then on week 16th, about a month from now, We'll be presenting all three projects at our final review here at my office, and I'll give more details on that uh, in the future. Um, but here's what we should be doing now. You've had, you've, to go on to part two, consider the feedback you got from part one. Mostly it was just a lot of green lights, great ideas. Now revise your text. Direction is needed. You may have to expand your text. You have, may have to um, cut your, your text down to fit into a, a quicker format. Think about your text with this. Finalize and update your storyboard as needed and then further explore your illustration needs. Don't necessarily rely on the assets you've developed for your for your storybook or for your baby board book, but know that you may have to customize things. You may need to change things. Going from, from a horizontal to a vertical, pretty extreme vertical, takes uh, adjusting. So make sure you, you work for that and that you make those changes. And then define your, or, or refine your layouts of your story screens to make them as good as possible, nice and tight. And think about the motion, of course, and how it's gonna work not just the motion, but the sound and the time. There's a time element involved now in this and it needs to go smoothly, not too fast, not too slow. And the communication needs to be good in terms of what the words are saying and what the visuals are showing at the same time. And then of course, keep updating your presentation. This is vital because your presentation is gonna be a key part of our final review where you're gonna present all three of your projects, each of them talking about your concept, your research, 
your preliminary design and your final product. So keeping your presentation updated is not only good for the A making machine in this in each of your assignments, but it's also good for having that stuff all done and ready to go for your finals. Okay, so here's a, a screenshot, a snapshot of what it looks like to expand your project for the for this past week. Basically, you had these first three pages of on the top row up here that kind of shows your overall concept, and then you're going to expand it so that you create uh, your vision for each of your we'll call them pages, your sl slides, your plates that go across the screen in whichever way possible. And then you're gonna also connect it with uh, each of the texts that go with um, each, each visual in, in, in the still form. And of course there'll be motion, so it won't necessarily be as simple as, as Ivy's book here, which was actually very simple. And again, if you're behind and if you're needing to complete this project in a way that's gonna be good, but you don't have a lot of time to do it, don't be afraid of having a simple Ken Burns style pan that moves across, that that has a, just a, a focus on your illustration, a focus on the words that you're hearing and not uh, get caught up into having to do a lot of animation or a lot of movement that you're not familiar with or that you don't have time to do. But if you do, I, want you, I encourage you to do as great a work as possible. So I'm not trying to discourage you from doing more than you should. I want you to surprise yourself and do a great job with this. But also if you're in need of getting things done within the time scale and the full context of your schedule, think about that and create the best course for what you're doing. A reminder that it's in the app, there's gonna be an intro that pop or a, a um, intro slide that pops up. It's not called an intro slide. I can't think of the name right now. Um, a dashboard that pops up uh, with the title and, and the credit. And in the beginning, when we talk about the narration, it's going to be important that you say the title, the name of the author and yourself as an illustrator, who the narrator is yourself or nobody, if it's AI or your friend's name or whoever. Uh, but when creating your first slide, just keep in mind that the top half should kind of be the focus more than the bottom. And it's not that you can't cover up what's there, but it'd be nice like this so nicely does um, work as a full image, but also works as an image cut in half. Um, and then as we will go towards week three, begin to think about uh, organizing your your storyboards into a form where you can begin the production of it within a motion graphics program like Figma or After Effects or whatever you use that's going to allow you to bring sound, motion, uh, and type and all those things together. Um, so I have this... Uh, I'll post it on Canvas and on Canvas, there's a series of links that are gonna be important. One of them is gonna be a link to the template for um, for Figma. And I'm gonna share that with each of you so that you all have access to that. There's also gonna be a link to a tutorial that is uh, it's a, a little movie that plays with sound that has a, a past student explain how to use the Figma Anima app to create, uh, to create the, this motion graphic using Figma in the way that um, many students have done before. Again, you can use After Effects if you want, but this will give you step-by-step -step on the motion, on the sound, and how to create everything so that it works through Figma and through the Anima app, or yeah, Anima plugin. Um, and you can find that in the class resources. You see down here, class resources. Um, and in class resources, there's a folder called Dirt Audiovisual Books Past Projects. That shows all the past projects to give you um, a sense of what other people have done. And then there's also, oh, what did I do with it? There's also another button that I didn't put on here. There's another folder up here that's called um, Dirt Audiovisual Book Mockup Tutorial, right below Audiovisual Past Projects. And in there, are there's a PDF version, there's a, a, a movie version, and then there's the template for Figma. Uh, okay. And then finally, like actually a couple of finally's. First finally is back to the storybooks. There's three of you, and here you are, uh, who still have not completed your storybooks and have not submitted your fi final files. You know who you are. I'm not going to name names, but you need to get that done as soon as possible, um, preferably over this weekend and to me by Sunday or Monday if needed. Um, again, that's critical. We need time for the printer to print this and to ship it to us from San Francisco. And um, if I don't get 
this to them, then there's going to be for us to get it on time. There's going to be rush charges that I am willing to pay, but I don't want to have to do that because it's quite expensive to make all these books for everybody. I'm giving them, I'm giving you these books for free, and um, it adds up. And I want to make sure I don't regret it. <laughs> um, so don't take too long. Please get them done as quickly as possible, and um, and share with me your packaged files. Make sure you package them in design. Make sure all the links are there, all the fonts are there, uh, that you use the templates, that um, you include your choice of your of your um, portrait, or if you weren't at the class, you take a portrait of yourself, and that you upload that to the part six final uh, file storybook link on our Google Drive. Uh, okay, so that's it for now. Lots to do. For class next week, uh, I'm, I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I think we're going to have small group sessions. I'll send out uh, an email with that uh, in the beginning, uh, next week before class so that we can have more, uh, we can have critique reviews together, but uh, we'll do them uh, Zoom, Zoom style probably. Or yeah, we'll do them Zoom, Zoom style, small groups. We'll meet online and we'll share each other's within like three or four people. Um, and the rest of the class time, when you're not in that Zoom session, is going to be dedicated for you to be working on your storybook project so that you can get it wrapped up and nicely done because there's a lot of moving parts there and I want to make sure you have the time. All right, guys, we will see you all uh, in on Zoom on Thursday night for your small group session. Reach out to me if you need and have a great rest of the week.